Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In our previous video, we had a brief discussion on what friction is, why it occurs, and the two basic types of friction. In this video, we will be discussing a very specific type of dry friction called sliding friction, otherwise known as kinetic friction. This type of friction occurs when two surfaces are in contact with each other. Sliding or kinetic friction normally occurs when an object subjected to external force overcomes the static friction and manages to move. Sliding friction, also known as kinetic friction, is governed by three laws. We will explain all three of these laws with the help of illustrations. The first law states that the force of friction always acts in a direction opposite to that in which the body is moving and is directly proportional to the applied load. Let's take a small look at this illustration to understand how friction works. Let's assume that the block has a mass m. The free body diagram of the block is shown here. The normal force acts in the upwards direction and the weight of the body acts downwards. Let's assume that a force F is applied on the block from the left as shown. Now the block moves towards the right. But how do you determine which direction friction acts? That's where this law comes into play. Just as it states, the direction of friction in this scenario will be opposite to the direction of motion of the block at the point of contact between the two surfaces. Let's assume another case. We add another block of mass 0.5m on top of the box with mass m. This increases the combined mass of both the boxes to 1.5m. When we compare the total friction force of both the sets of boxes, we'll find that the set of boxes with greater mass tends to have higher frictional force opposing motion. This is because frictional force is directly proportional to the mass of the object. More the mass, more is the frictional force. The second law of friction states that the force of friction is independent of the total contact area of the objects. It's a common misconception that objects which have a huge area of cross-section tend to experience greater friction during movement. This is a totally wrong assumption. This assumption is normally made because people are accustomed to seeing off-road vehicles or tanks having bigger tires or tracks. The reason behind this is not friction. We'll explain this as we progress in the video. Now back to our original issue. The reason why friction is independent of area is because of pressure. The formula for pressure is force by area. You'll notice from the formula that pressure is inversely proportional to area. So by increasing the total area, we will reduce the pressure, which in turn reduces the amount of pressure on each of the surface ridges. Even though we have increased the total area of the object, the irregularities between the two surfaces will not lock together due to less pressure on them. Now back to our original issue. The reason why off-road vehicles, tanks or construction equipment have tracks or very big wheels is again pressure. If these vehicles have small wheels, they will just sink into the ground because all the weight of the vehicle will act on a small area instead of being spread. That's why off-road vehicles have thicker tires. These vehicles are designed to drive in places where normal vehicles can't drive like marshes, bogs and sand dunes. If these vehicles have thin wheels, they will sink into the ground. Now to the third law of friction which states that kinetic friction is independent of the sliding velocity of the object. This is also called Coulomb's law of friction. It is vital that you don't confuse kinetic friction with fluid friction because for fluid friction, increase in velocity increases the value of friction. But this is not the case for kinetic friction. To better understand this, let's take the help of this graph here. The x-axis of the graph denotes time, while y-axis denotes frictional force. Initially, you'll notice that the object is stationary and no external force is acting on it. So the total frictional force on it is zero. But when an external load is applied to move the object, you'll notice that there is an increase in the amount of frictional force. This is static friction. Once static friction is overcome, the object moves. This is when kinetic friction acts on it. You can notice that the value of kinetic friction is much lesser than the value of static friction. But why? For this, we need to take a much closer look at what is happening between the surfaces at a microscopic level. You'll notice that there are a lot of ridges and protrusions on the surface. When the object is stationary, the ridges or protrusion overlock and prevent further movement. Once sufficient force is applied to unlock the two surfaces, the number of ridges which are in constant contact with each other is considerably reduced. Since the object is in motion, the chances of the protrusions to lock into themselves is also very less. This is the reason why kinetic friction is much lesser than static friction and most importantly, not dependent on velocity. Since no matter at which velocity the object slides on the surface, the number of ridges locking will also not change. This is the reason why sliding friction is independent of velocity. Well, that's it for this video guys. We'll meet again in the next one. Until then, bye.